Legal malware, that's what one expert is calling today's social media apps. Tristan Harris had this to say, the average person checks their smartphone 150 times per day. Why do we do this? It's the number one ingredient in slot machines, intermittent variable rewards. Addictiveness is maximized when the rewards are variable. Technology hijacks the way we perceive our choices and replaces them with new ones. What vulnerabilities lie within these apps? And is Beijing poised to exploit them? Let's dive in. Welcome to China in Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. In today's episode, we hear from Rex Lee, cybersecurity advisor at MySmart Privacy. He explains why he calls social media apps legal malware, how the apps are intentionally designed to be addicted, and how America's adversaries, like Beijing, could take advantage of those vulnerabilities. Here's more. Rex, thank you so much for joining us. Great to have you back on the show. Thank you, Tiffany, for having me on the show this week. So, Rex, to begin, as a cybersecurity and app and platform developer, what are some of the like biggest cases you've worked on in your career? Well, as you know, I'm a advisor for the U.S. government. I've been an advisor for the Department of Homeland Security regarding the DHS study on mobile device security, which was published in 2017. I've also been an advisor to the NSA as well as uh, lawmakers regarding big tech hearings. I've been an advisor for the Senate and House Judiciary Committees regarding the Facebook Cambridge Analytica hearings all the way through the 230 hearings, as well as the most recent hearings involving Facebook, Instagram, whistleblower Francis Hagen. And Rex, it seems when we talk about these different social media platforms or big tech, one area that comes up is the kind of information trafficking business. So to begin, what is that and where is this headed? Well, most people think companies like Facebook and Google are technology companies. They're really information trafficking companies, meaning that they use technology as a vehicle to monitor, track, and data mine their end users. Think of social media platforms and intrusive apps that support your smartphone as legal malware or surveillance and data mining platforms that enable these developers to surveil and data mine their end users for financial gain. That's the business that they're in. So they use technology to collect as much information on the end user as possible. For example, an app, and the reason I call apps legal malware is because the app enables the developer to surveil, data mine the end user while collecting over 5,000 highly confidential data points associated with the end user's personal business, medical, legal, and employment information since the surveillance and data mining is indiscriminate, meaning that it takes place 24 by 7. So when you have an app on your phone, it always has control of your camera and your microphone, and it's enabling the developer to collect things like your text messages, your email messages, your calendar events, and so forth, while it attaches itself to your um, sensors like your accelerometer, uh, so that they can conduct audio, video, and physical surveillance on you. This is how they make their money. So in the old days when you surfed onto Facebook before Facebook proliferated to mobile devices, they were only able to surveil you when you were on your PC. But now that it's on your mobile phone through the app that supports your mobile phone, the app is what's uh, enabling the developer to surveil and data mine you. It's not while you're on the platform anymore. It's, it's as long as that app is active on your smartphone, your connected TV, your PC, and so forth. And Rex, speaking of that, it seems nowadays, you know, a lot of us buy things online, so all our credit card information is on there. And as you mentioned, legal malware. So how are these apps different from weapons, or are they different? Well, uh, today, what I, what I generally tell people, because I speak at trade shows, is that for the first time in history, we see companies weaponizing their products against their end users in order to exploit their end users for financial gain, meaning that the platforms are developed to basically turn the end user into a product that can be monetized and exploited for financial gain. It used to be you got something for free, um, such as a Facebook account before it, it proliferated to smartphones and mobile devices. 
you traded your personal information to be on Facebook and Facebook collected that information when you were on their platform and the information correlated to what you were doing on Facebook and the consumer information that they could collect on you. And then they uh, then would do targeted ads to get you to buy things. Today, that model is gone. Today, they're just surveilling and data mining you um, via products and services that we're paying for, such as our smartphones, our PCs, our connected vehicles, our smart TVs. All of these products cost money. So now we're paying for the products and we're getting nothing in return for free while they collect all of our personal information and our business information, package it, monetize it, and uh, make money. The problem with this is not it's not only US app and platform developers that can do this. The problem that we're seeing today regarding privacy, cybersecurity, is the fact that nation state app developers or companies from adversarial countries such as China and Russia are developing these apps like ByteDance. ByteDance is a developer of TikTok as well as Tencent is the developer of WeChat. Those are the two most popular uh, social media apps in the world. They're surpassing Facebook and so forth. So we're seeing this uh, proliferate to app and platform developers from China and Russia. Prisma Labs is another one. They have the most uh, popular photo editing app in the world and they're an Android app developer. So they develop apps for the Android operating system, which is Google. And speaking of that, since there is a financial aspect for these, you know, apps, it seems, you know, in a lot of ways, many people are becoming addicted <laughs> to scrolling endlessly. So what do you see in that area? Are they trying to make us addicted? What's happening here? That's done by design. Um, the apps, the way I describe the apps is they're intrusive, addictive, and manipulative and they're supported by predatory terms of service. If you don't click on, I agree to accept the terms of service that support the apps, you can't use it. And then often if you don't accept the terms of use, you can't even use your smartphone because the operating systems are intrusive as well. So if you don't accept the uh, terms of use, a lot of times you can't even use your product. But the apps themselves are intentionally designed to be addictive, not according to me, but according to recent public admissions by uh, Meta co-founder, which is Facebook, uh, Sean Parker, uh, who admits this fact, as well as uh, Tristan Harris, a former product designer for Google. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Sean Parker said this during an Axios interview. It's a social validation feedback loop, the kind of thing that a hacker like myself would come up with because you're exploiting vulnerabilities in human psychology. God only knows what it's doing to our children's brains. The inventors, creators, it's me, it's Mark Zuckerberg, Kevin Sistrom of Instagram. It's all of us understood this consciously and we did it anyways. That's his direct quote. So what he's talking about regarding social validation feedback loops that's associated with brain hijacking technology associated with manipulative advertising technology. This is an actual class taught at Stanford University where a lot of these app developers go and they take this class and they go to work for app developers in uh, Silicon Valley. One other quote I'd like to read to you from uh, Tristan Harris that, that really highlights brain uh, hijacking. Tristan Harris had this to say, the average person checks their smartphone 150 times per day. Why do we do this? It's the number one ingredient in slot machines, intermittent variable rewards. Addictiveness is maximized when the rewards are variable. Technology hijacks the way we perceive our choices and replaces them with new ones. That's all for today's China in Focus on YouTube. We're now sharing a shortened version of our program here after being demonetized for more than a year. Here's what's coming up in our second half. How is Beijing's unrestricted warfare against the West playing out on social media? And a closer look at a defense bill lobbyists from TikTok seem to be targeting. We hear from Rex Lee, cybersecurity advisor at MySmart Privacy, for more. The full episode is available on our partner platform, Atbok TV. To sign up, click the link down below. Before you go, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, email and messenger app Secure. Every click, every post you share online is scanned and monitored. Big tech is watching. Your data is not yours, and it's being mined and stolen. In 2020 alone, over 150 million Americans were affected by data leaks. 
The average American's personal data was stolen over four times during the course of the year. Now, there's a new way to build privacy online. Introducing email and messenger app Secure. Secure servers and data center are hosted in Switzerland, home to the world's strictest data privacy laws. Secure is the only secure messaging and email app that does not rely on big tech companies like Amazon, Google or Microsoft. It uses proprietary encryption technology and an independent platform to safeguard your data. Secure doesn't ask for your phone number or copy your contacts. Instead, add people through their secure numbers. And for non-secure users, there's a chat by invite feature. Visit secure.com to learn more. Get started with Secure Messenger for just $5 or $10 for the email and messenger package. Use promo code Tiffany for 25% off. Secure, the true solution for your digital privacy and security. Secure is a private and secure messaging and email solution hosted in Switzerland using military-grade encryption and Swiss privacy laws, giving you true privacy. Secure is 100% private and does not collect or sell any of your personal data. Secure's Helix technology connects you securely to our Swiss servers without the need of a VPN, guaranteeing privacy and security for all your communications. Secure Messenger doesn't require your phone number or any personal data that hackers target. Chat by Invites allows you to chat privately and securely with anyone outside of your secure network without the need for others to download Secure. Secure Send offers you a private and secure way to email anyone outside of Secure. You won't find this level of privacy or security on any other email or instant messaging application. Visit secure.com. Regain and protect your privacy today.